This is actually new for me. I've never done a teaser talk, so I actually commend uh, EuroPython for the concept even. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Um, so what I'm going to try and do here is give you uh, just the bare basics of what I will be doing tomorrow. Uh, try and point you at a much thing. If we don't have the internet, I won't be able to cover a, a, a lot of the stuff there, but the key thing really is going to be this DVD. Have everybody gone by my desk over there and picked up one of these DVDs with the VirtualBox image? Okay. Uh, if you haven't, this, I still have a bunch of them. I've kept some of them uh, behind as well. So um, after this, just by my desk as you walk out along there, I've got some DVDs here. The other one that if you came by yesterday, you won't have is this one over here. So f first, my apologies. I'm Todd Tretchner. I'm with Oracle. Um, been with Oracle about 14 years. Uh, Last, like, probably about six years, I've done everything from engaging Java user groups to PHP user groups to Linux user groups, and now I'm getting into the Python user, user group community. So I've been to EuroPython. This is my, I counted, I put up in the abstract second time, but I realized it was my third time, um, twice in Birmingham and now here. Uh, Florence is just a great city. Any city that can organize for me to sit next to your 400-meter women's champion on my flight from Frankfurt to Florence deserves some credit. So, um, yeah, Chiara, um, Chiara um, Bonassi, or I'll butcher her last name, but anyway, she won the first in the 400 up in Stockholm, Sweden. She said, yeah, yeah, I run. So I said, well, what, what race you know, do you I knew, I knew she was a you know, sports, sports thing, just two girls dressed in Italia-type outfits, sponsored looking really like people that actually knew that what they were doing exercising. I said, they're, they're soccer players or, or something like that. Turns out she's the 400-meter uh, champion. She starts off the first leg of the 400-meter relay. And in the race up in Stockholm, I was just up in my room, and I saw the actual replay of the event. And she won the first you know, 400 meters. She was like, you know, first one out of the bat, bat in hand. And so she, she did her, her, her country proud. Um, so... That was my ex first experience in Florence. Um, it was, uh, and then, uh, needless to say, also first taxi driver that was a woman. So uh, <laughs> I've traveled for probably, I don't know, 20 years in that. And uh, I have to come halfway around the world, end up in Italy to uh, have, meet a, a woman taxi driver, which was neat because she said that about 20 to 25% was actually um, um, is woman here, which is amazing, because that's a credit to the city, because it's obviously a pretty safe city. Um, well, with that said, you didn't come to hear about how great Florence was. Um, this, is, this one here is the culmination of about three years of me bugging development and engineering. So I got the database development team at Oracle to build me a VirtualBox image with all of their hands-on labs for all of the Oracle database stuff and that. Uh, I then got the guy that uh, did the PHP community to add in his uh, performance demos on the same virtual image. And as of literally three weeks ago, I got the first Python guide for using CX Oracle and that installed on the same image. So that's what this VirtualBox image is here. Um, I'll show you in terms of just the, the, the setup. It's going to be basically you just you know, pull it out. Um, if you, how many of you can I just get an indication of um, how many of you guys actually use Oracle in your, in your operation somewhere in your business? Okay. Okay. Excellent. Um, what version of Python are you guys using? Uh, is it mainly 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7? Okay. 2.6? Okay. Mainly 2.6, 2.7. Okay. Uh, anybody doing 3.0 stuff yet? I know that the CX driver supports it. Uh, Anybody? Not, not yet, okay. Wesley did say that you probably want to wait until you port that, and if it's Oracle database, obviously you, you do want to make sure that it's stable and that before you do the next jump. Um, so what you'll see on this DVD is you have a, basically a virtual box image. The one that you're going to care about is I've got two players here the Mac player, and the Windows player. So how many of you have run VirtualBox before or are familiar with VirtualBox? Okay, a couple of people not familiar with it. Um, VirtualBox is very similar to VMware Server. So if you're familiar with desktop virtualization, 
VirtualBox is exactly like that. Okay? It, it runs as an application on top of your existing OS. So in this case, I happen to be running a Linux version, Kubuntu, on my laptop, and then I'm running VirtualBox on top of that, and then I, you'll install the VirtualBox image, the appliance, into that VirtualBox. Um, if you have the option between running it on Windows and running it on Linux or Mac, run it on Linux or Mac as a host. VirtualBox is just a lot faster on, on that than... than it's, uh, I mean, it works fine, great right on Windows and that, it just, it's a little bit faster. Uh, and we did notice with one guy last night that uh, Windows sometimes, on the memory side, uh, hogs more memory than uh, Linux would on that. Um, so just something to take on, on that. Uh, with the, the, what you're gonna do then is install either, unfortunately I only have limited space in the DVD, so I've got Windows and Mac there. If you're running it on Linux, what you're going to want to do is go to virtualbox.org. Okay, so virtualbox, just like on the DVD, it has virtualbox. Just add a .org, go to it. You can download any flavor, Ubuntu, Gen2, Kubuntu, Fedora, you know, uh, you name it, Oracle. Um, there's, there's several different ones there. Uh, the other DVD that you did not see yesterday if you came around the table is this one here, which is Oracle Linux. So Oracle Linux 5 release 6, 64-bit. We do encourage people, if they're running Oracle, use 64-bit on Linux, okay? Um, it is going to be a lot faster. Both Oracle and Linux use 64-bit well. The image itself is actually 32-bit, uh, uh, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's, it's a test environment. Uh, that just happened to be what, what the guys were using at the time. Um, so when you actually do your install of that... Um, We'll go here. So this is the one problem with giving it to development and telling them to slap in my Python guide in and give me a new export right before I leave. Um, you don't get the getting started PDF that was on the previous version of the DVD, <laughs> okay? So this uh, nice little doc here, which basically walks you through the installation of the VirtualBox part of it, isn't on the DVD itself. If anybody isn't familiar with the VirtualBox image, please, you know, tomorrow during, during the training, I can walk you through it. We can get, get it all up and running. Um, but, and we can get you a copy of this. But basically, it just walks you through. If you're familiar with the VirtualBox part of it, literally all you're doing is you're downloading the latest VirtualBox one. Um, the image, you don't have to do this step, which, because that VM image is on the DVD that I'm giving you guys. Um, when you get to it, you're just going to do so, uh, file, import appliance, and then you choose, and you're going to select the .ovf file, which is the only .ovf file in the root DVD. So what that would look like is once you install VirtualBox, you'll get an icon that looks like that. And this part now is the same whether you do it on Linux, Mac, Windows, whatever, because you're now in your VirtualBox manager. Um, the first time you install VirtualBox manager, you're not going to see anything over here. Okay, this area in here will be completely blank because you don't have any guest machines installed yet. Okay, you don't have any virtual machines installed. And then what you'll do is you'll do file, import appliance, and then it says choose, and you'll go to or wherever your DVD is, and. You'll see, actually, I did that really quickly, but basically it's the only .ovf file there. So when it's searching for the .ovf file, if, you've got, if that's the only DVD you have in your DVD player, that's what you're going to get. One of the guys said that he had a problem with, uh, he didn't have a DVD player here because he's only got a netbook or something like that. I copied the whole DVD onto a 16 gig USB flash drive that I have. So uh, if any of you are in a similar situation, <laughs> we can take care of you uh, tomorrow morning on that as well. Um, you would choose, choose that one, and then you just hit Next. Um, I'm not going to do that because I've already installed it. Basically, you wait there, and what it does during that time, 
is it will sit there and it, it, it creates a 15 gig file on your hard drive. Okay? So that's what it uses to create this virtual environment. So in terms of resources, what you're going to need to run this virtual image is 2 gigs of RAM and 15 gigs of space. Okay? Gracias. Gra grazie. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then at the end of it, you'll get this Oracle Developer Days, and it will be powered off. Okay? At that point in time, you can start it up, and it will say the first message that comes up, Windows bot, is the right control key, the control key on the right-hand side of the board. That is the one that you can toggle between your guest environment, which is at this point in time, this area here, and your outside host existing. So everything outside of this window here now is going to be that guest environment. To get back and forth from that, you can just use that control key to, to basically remove cursor control. Okay? Um, the first time through the virtual machine, I'll show you guys, um, there's a way that you can actually um, add this additional like um, user toolkit, so the virtual box extensions. That, on most OSs, will allow you to just mouse over directly back and forth, and it'll automatically know which window you're working on based upon that. Um, the, um, and, and so you'll have to do that once, and then for most OSs, on, in terms of your host OSs, that will just be fine, and, and, and it'll work, work great on that. When you actually look at the, um, the guest OS, you'll also see over here the um, settings. So when you're working with um, um, VirtualBox, you can actually come in here and check out all of your settings. When it's powered down, you can actually change these settings. Say, look, I'm going to give it more base memory than, than it existing is. That 900 megs is actually pretty close to the bare minimum that this machine is going to use. Okay? Uh, reason being, it's got a full-blown 11 GR2 Enterprise Edition database, um, plus all the hands-on labs, plus the sample scheme as everything that a, a Oracle DBA would use. Um, once that's, um, so you can change that. This is kind of the key one here. The network adapter, this one here, will inherit the uh, resources of the underlying host OS. So it will get, if I have internet connected on my host laptop, I can have internet running in my guest machine by using that one there. Um, it will just pass through. Um, once this comes... When it gets to the, um, the login for uh, the virtual machine, you'll see, no, that's not what I wanted to do. OK, here we go. The first login prompt, character-based, just a, a root type prompt. Don't uh, log in there. Wait for it to get to the GUI prompt. Uh, once it gets to the GUI prompt, you'll see something that looks like this. So this is now Oracle Linux 5, Update 5. Basically, that's exactly the same as Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5, Update 5, with an additional kernel. So you have one completely Red Hat compatible kernel, and you have an additional unbreakable enterprise kernel, which is basically more performant. That one goes directly off of mainline source code. The password, Oracle, Oracle, lowercase, that's what you would have known if that help start HPDF file had been in the root of the DVD. Okay? So it's kind of important to read that. You know, that's the only piece you need to know outside of understanding how VirtualBox works to get this up and running. After that point, you actually have all the guides inside the VirtualBox. So this now is a complete image running on top of whatever host you're running it in. It's running Oracle Linux here. You can see it's got the complete enterprise database running here. You've got sample reset scripts to reset your labs if you've done them and want to redo the labs. Um, you've got um, over here in the, uh, are we done to five minutes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So here we have um, the 
hands-on labs. So this is the complete hands-on labs from the Oracle development team. Oracle Apex is a quick and dirty rapid application development environment. The whole thing runs inside your database. You can deploy it and manage it and develop it through a browser. Okay? Uh, SQL Developer is a quick and dirty uh, database management tool. You can use it for MySQL, you can use it for Oracle, even Microsoft SQL Server. Um, obviously, the capabilities in SQL Developer aren't as developed for, um, my, say, like MySQL Workbench as it is for uh, Oracle yet. Um, how many of you guys have uh, MySQL in your accounts or running it? Okay. Yeah. If uh, I might be able to get a performance engineer to come give a talk on that next time. So uh, if there's enough interest in that, just make it, make it aware and Giovanni can let me know. Um, the in-memory database cache is times 10. So it's, it's in-memory database. It's already integrated with the existing enterprise database. This is an architecture that a lot of telecoms use. If you need sub-second uh, response times, this is a great way of doing it. Um, XMLDB, pretty self-explanatory. So you've got hands-on labs for each one of those. Um, this one here is actually PHP and Oracle database. It's basically a performance examples of how to do performance. So if you know anything about PHP, you can actually see where, where those, those features are. This is where I kind of feel a little bit bad because I don't have the Python resources to the same level as the PHP resources yet on this DVD. I mean, this is my first foray into this. So hopefully I can bump into some guys that know Python really well that can help me get, get, get this a little bit further along. Uh, the Python side is here. So this is my guide that I put together to help people get up and running. We do have a bunch of resources on OTN, um, which is Oracle Technology Network. That's what I work for. Um, and uh, so a bunch of technical articles on Python and that. Anthony Tuninga's article on using CX Oracle his website is phenomenal resource. Um, just really, really good stuff here. Um, it goes through from here, um, setting up the environment, running it on Mac, Windows, download this version. So this is what we've shown. One thing I did tell you is that the first time when it comes up, it will step you through here, but it will say to come to, you've done all of this um, here. So you'll be prompted to install the latest VirtualBox guest editions. You should do this by doing the install guest editions host D. That's right here under devices. Install guest editions host D. Okay? That's the one that gives you things like, okay, connecting your USB drive and, and getting access to it and have, being able to mouse over the window without having to do control every time to get regain cursor control. Um, the... Then the part that is of particular interest to the Python side of the house is once you've got all of that done, you're going to need to um, work out what your Linux version is. In this case, I know what the Linux version is. Okay, it's a 32-bit uh, Linux version. Um, it's RPM-based, so that's, that's one of the things. Yeah. The other thing you need to know is what version of the database when you're choosing your CX driver. Um, so that is, oops, I'm talking about something that I'm not showing you. So it's CX Oracle. And here's where I give a huge shout out to Anthony Teninga, okay? He, this is a community guy. He has nothing to do with Oracle. He just uses Oracle in his workplace. He developed it basically to help him out, and he does a phenomenal job, Okay. Um, and with that, I just got the stop sign, so I'll show you right over here, basically. Go to CSX Forge. This is something that's kind of a, a good thing you want to do if you're doing it before tomorrow morning. Uh, because the network is iffy, you want to do this section of it, um, try and get the downloaded into your thing. And with that, we have it. Okay, so it's right here. Everything's there, guys. Um, love to help you out if anybody comes on Thursday. Um, if anybody came in late, I still got some T-shirts. Uh, if any of your buddies wanted to come see it and they didn't hear it, the rest of those T-shirts are going in the talk tomorrow. So thanks, thanks for your time. Uh, and also, I'll be available up until then and tomorrow. Thank you.